Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 Road to Glory series for 2019 for episode number 18 today at the USA GP. As you can see, it is a miserable day at Kota, so I already know this episode can go in the bin, but last time out of Japan, it was a very hectic one, a very fortunate episode. Let's move back to the Williams Charity Show, as one car spewed off and left there, and uh, we gain one more free position up into B14. Keep it coming, lads, please! But yellow flags up ahead, and again, more charity for us. Look at the... the a station on the right there. Someone spewed off on the right through 130R. And so that's two more free positions. We're up into P12. Two more DNFs. Oh, Hulkenberg's hit the grass as well. Those two real slow. And we're going to go for it. We're going to go for the massive dive down into the top of locks up. And we've done it. We've made a double pass. And once again, it's left to me to pick up the pieces for Williams. P5 on the road. And so, of course, in true Williams fashion, obviously last episode was a banger, a great result for us. And so the F1 gods have given us rain at the start. Heavy rain, actually. So you just know that our car is going to be about five seconds off the pace, probably. OK, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. Ah, and this just makes it worse. The fact that we've had an upgrade this weekend, drag reduction update. You know, it's been a good few, you know, last two episodes at least. You know, some upgrades coming in. We've got two more upgrades maybe for later on, next episode. You know, things are looking good, but the weather keeps ruining things. You know, God just needs to piss off. You know, he's stopping Williams. Get, you know what? I think that's the party line from Williams. Oh, we'd be at the forefront in like a year's time, but the weather just keeps stopping us from upgrading to be honest and getting good results because good results mean more R&D and more R&D means a better car. Obviously, that's totally how it works in real life, right? But yeah, we've got heavy rain icons for qualifying. Uh, you saw at the start there, it looked pretty miserable, so I'm not expecting much, but we can't do anything now. It's going to be sunny in the race, at least, so we're going to have to try and do some kamikaze driving on lap number one, but we get into qualifying then. You can see it's tipping it down. We're actually on inters, though. Everyone's on inters, so maybe, I don't know, I maybe should have tried something clever and maybe gone to full wet tyres, because it is Really quite wet. I, I feel like it looks wet enough for wet tyres, but we, we've all gone on inters anyway. And you can see the grip levels are fully not there. I mean, into, to what is usually a flat-out right-hander little kink corner, I've gone full opposite lock there. So you can see the car literally has no sense of grip. And to be honest, I may as well put some metal plates under the rear tyres, because that's how much of the rear end is stepping out. And to be fair, the front end also is not much better. Remember, we've only got literally one single bit of carbon vibe, probably, in terms of downforce. And that's probably just gone in terms of the... I'm, I was... You know what? I wouldn't be shocked if the front wing fell off just with the, the weight of the rain. That's how brittle this car has been this season. Finish it off with some style, to be fair. Not not any useful style, but style nonetheless. Spinning it across the line. And what's our engineer got to say about that? It's a bit disappointing, but we just need to push hard in the race and we can still come away with something. Oh, really? Really? I'm shocked he wasn't happy with that result. I mean, our engineer's been so bipolar lately in terms of being happy or sad about good results. So, yeah, it's not looking great. Uh, too 2.9, pretty much three seconds off the pace. Kibitz is 3.5 off the pace. So, yeah, we're taking a bit of a backward slump this episode compared to Japan, the lofty heights that that was. But uh, like I said, it's dry in the race. So let's look forward. Um, you know, it can only get better. You know, that's the only uh, positive I can pull out uh, pull out my head from here is that we can't possibly go anywhere. Oh, hang on. It's Williams. Of course it could go worse. You must be really happy. You must be really happy. You must be really happy. What? Sorry. Come again? Claire. Yeah. Were you watching that qualifier? This is like the fifth time Claire has asked the stupidest question in one of these interviews. She, she's genuinely seen that result. 3.5 3 off the pace. Three seconds off the pace for myself. My teammate way off. And she's genuinely said, you must, been ha you must have been happy with that result. What the hell have you smoked before that qualifying session? The weather hasn't been ideal in qualifying. What's your take on it? Yeah, no, no, the, the weather wasn't ideal, Claire. I'm not, I'm not even going to answer your question. I'm still baffled by what you just said before. Happy about that result? On what planet would, would anyone be happy? That I'm sure a F2 team wouldn't be happy with that pace. You scraped the walls a few times. Were you struggling for grip? Was I struggling for grip? Um, let me think about that, Claire. The car is not great in the dry. Add some H2O, and the car, despite being a boat anyway, doesn't actually resemble anything like a boat in wet conditions. It's more like a penguin on skates on dry land. It just doesn't work, and all I can say is, yeah, I just don't know what's going on. I don't know what the team are doing back of the factory, designing a, a canoe, but then they come to the circuit, and they've chucked out the canoe 
new design when it when it's raining and we turned up with a, a toboggan. Appreciate your time. Like I genuinely believe when we rocked up on Saturday in the morning and it started pouring it down, the team, like the, the lead engineer, stuck his head out the garage and literally said something like this. What is that coming out of the sky now? Like the man had no concept of what even water was, what rain was. He had to ask the locals. He was completely lost. But alas, we have to move on. We have to move on. Let's keep positive here. We, we've had to keep that tactic many times before. Forget about what's just happened and let's go in with blinkers on into Sunday's race. It's nice and sunny. It's good. We have to, you know, try and be committed on that one because obviously that's the, the, the place where we're going to make mo most of the passes, I would assume. USA is already quite a difficult circuit with the AI anyway, let alone being in a Williams car. So this is, I'm not feeling too confident. I think we're going to make some passes on turn one and then that might be it. I can't lie. The strategy will be uh, ultra soft tyres to the super soft tyres, obviously a one stop. Uh, the tyre wear is also pretty bad as well, so might need to think about going for a bit of an undercut perhaps on the ultras, but uh, uh, we can't really say much more. It's just uh, really time to get the prayer hands out again, guys. I want you guys in the comments below to also pause the video now, get the prayers out, because we're going to need a lot of charity this episode. I'm talking like 10 DNFs again, because I don't see any other way we're going to get into the points, to be honest. All right, so here we go then to five red lights for the USA Grand Prix. Time to do some racing at Kotal. I say racing, actually. It's really just surviving and trolling around, hoping that there's some crashing. But here we go then. The lights are out. We're on the way. It's a good start for us, actually, compared to the racing point car of Sergio Perez into turn one. They're getting boxed in a little bit by Lando Norris and Albon here on the outside. Going to try my luck on the outside line. Going to get pushed wide a little bit there. And that's actually really, to be honest, not even... even even the, the, the being pushed wide. That was just the fact that I had no grip there on the outside with this car. And we go through the S section. This is going to be horrendous the entire time, this entire race. But right now, all single file, of course. Very difficult to make a two-by-two two two situation occur in this first sector. But uh, Albon should be passable. Remember, we are in a fight with Toro Rosso. So this Toro Rosso ahead of us, Albon, is very important because we can't lose points to Toro Rosso. We, you know, we, we went well, Japan. Got a double points uh, scoring finish. But we need to make sure we continue it because Toro Rosso could very very easily come back in this championship by uh, to, compared to us. And so we go down the inside of the Thai Brit and we're up into what is now P15. So five places off the points paying positions. Kibitz is way down the order still at the moment as we look behind. So got a long way to go. But now can we just try and stick on the back of Giovinazzi perhaps and try and see what we can do later on. We move on all the way to lap number two. Trying to close up on the Italian but nothing uh, gained so far through the last corner. DRS will be activated. Uh, obviously we've got a drag update this weekend so let's see if those drag updates will come into handy I kind of hope so you, you would like to think but it, it is Williams in the past upgrades really haven't uh, paid dividends too much uh, we've got a car wide though uh, uh, Hamilton I think that is from the race lead out of the Grand Prix P1 so our prayers have already been answered one less car to worry about we're already up one free position into P14 so Thank you very much, F1 Gods. Let's just have another four, please, lads, and uh, we'll be all rosy. Moving things on to the back straight on lap number three. Giovinazzi's going to have a look at the McLaren, despite the McLaren having DRS open as well. They go two by two. Is also the Ferraris being attacked by the Renault. They're a bit of carbon fibre flame, I think that was, or either a graphical glitch. I can't quite uh, make my mind up which one that was, but Sainz on the inside there. Giovinazzi doing well, though, but Sainz get these, uh, gets the elbows out. The Italian is going to be hard-pressed there on the exit. Let's try and catch him napping with a Fernando Alonso-style dive bomb to the inside there of the double left hander. We've squirmed through on the exit up into P13 and now can we get on the back of uh, Carlos Sainz of course another rival team McLaren and Toro Rosso being the real main teams we're worrying about. Also kind of good though to be fair to overtake an Alfa Romeo car but I suspect Kimi Raikkonen is doing a pretty good job up ahead of getting some more consistent points for Alfa Romeo. So we'll just worry about the cars ahead of us and that is this orange car ahead on the left hand side we go and we're, it's a pretty easy pass there and so it's actually quite nice to see the DR the, the drive reduction upgrades we made this episode have actually worked quite well because I feel like we were quite far back from that McLaren and then our car just became a rocket ship there with DRS open so at least we got that going for us so kudos kudos Williams I guess I guess let's not let's not give them too much praise if they if we give them too much praise then be too cocky too confident they'll suck on the job you know they'll they'll be swayed by another packet of bourbon biscuits back at the factory and then they just won't make they won't make ne the next race's car let's face it but the good time may continue to roll on here. We move on to lap number six, catching up to the other Toro Cafe out there. So this could be it. This could be the thing that seals getting some more points over Toro or just at least finishing ahead of Toro if we both don't score any points. 
because we go to the left hand side once again with DRS. The car working a treat actually I've got to say up into P11 but all this overtaking, all this action, still no points to show for it. Although I will say the Ferrari up ahead there, I think of Leclerc again, Leclerc having some issues in this race and he's only in P9 there so you know if he has more issues, hold up the Renault, could you know slip down the inside and then Bob's your uncle we're up into the points bang Bob we're up into the points paying position, so let's see how that goes. Obviously, Leclerc has been an aid to the Williams team. I almost want to say to Claire, you know, one of these races, get get Charles on the payroll, because he, he's done so much. He's held up cars at Hungary. He's, he's had issues himself to give us free positions. The man's done more for the team than some of the lead engineers have done. So we come in for our one and only pit stop of the afternoon, then onto a set of super soft tyres. Those ultras definitely feeling very second-hand indeed, and then we'll try and see what we can do. I mean, if Leclerc's issues do continue on, we genuinely could overtake a, a Ferrari car for the second time this season and that's definitely headline worthy Claire just letting you know that's definitely a headline that's that's a chart topper that that's going to bring in some new sponsors we're going to get that headline on the on the papers or in the back pages but here we go then out of the pit lane yellow flags and oh there's been a huge crash ahead of us and so much so it froze the game and gave me a big screen uh, free, screen freeze but uh, we're up into P14 uh, four, now and that was uh, that'll be two free positions because it was two cars there I believe uh, the Haas and the, the Renault and uh, Kubica ahead of me is also limping a little bit. Remember, he's not made a pit stop yet. He's going very slow. I think he's got damage to the front wing as we nearly crash into him. Is this what I think it is? Has this been the biggest team play ever? Has Kubica just taken out two people for me? He sabotaged his own race to give me two free positions. If that's so, give him a raise now. He deserves it. I'm going to forget about all the controversy about taking me out back at Silverstone. He's done an absolute madness there if he's done that. He's fallen over on his own sword in order for me to get some points because as we move on then we get up the order people in the pit lane up into p9 and that is literally because of that crash oh, there is no way i would have made it to the points if it wasn't for that little crash outside into outside turn one no chance so kubica top props to you mate you've done you've done god's work there we'll have a look at a replay then we got the house of magnuson coming out of the pit lane there he was obviously one of the cars at dnf the racing point car and the oh out of the outside and no i'm mistaken then kubica was not the man who did it. It was actually Sergio Perez who assassinated Magnus in there and that allowed obviously the, the pile up and unfortunately then Kubica got held up in that. So actually it's not Kubica doing me a favour it's another classic Kubica bit of bad luck there as he's kind of uh, had his race ruined for about the 500th time this season despite there only being about 15 rounds 16 rounds gone so far but anyway uh, after that in the points P9 you know opens up possibilities. What can we go on and do here? Is going to be any more action this Grand Prix? <coughs> That'll be no. That'll be no. No, nothing happened in this Grand Prix. At this point, you could have turned on and watched uh, Strictly Come Sequins or whatever. Yeah, no, nothing happened there and uh, we just trundle home in P9. So, wasn't the best ending to the race. I can't lie. I've had better races. But uh, anyway, it's still going to be points. It's P9. It's only two points in comparison to the double point scoring position we had last summer. But points are points and so I'm I'm pretty happy with that. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. And of course, Jeff is a misery guts, and he just wants me to pick up Rubber, the lowly bastard. But no, I'd say in the circumstances, really, you know, poor qualifying, you know, heavy rain issues, P18, P20, coming away with two points at Kota, which, like I said, is one of the most difficult circuits ready for the AI. They're very consistent around here. I call that a big win, actually. That's pretty much the equivalent of what we did at Japan, to be honest, because of how hard the circuit is. And, uh, oh, it looks like uh, Hamilton and the Mercedes crew are celebrating quite a fair bit. This was actually from earlier on in the Grand Prix. This is when Hamilton DNF'd early into turn one. He's got out of the car, got back to the garage. He realized, hang on, guys, we've got half a race left to kill. Let's just go down to local, get a few points in. But no, 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 fair play, fair play. Hamilton has won the championship very early on, I must say, in this career mode season. But to be fair, no one's going to care. I mean, let's be real. No one cares about Hamilton winning the Drivers' Championship. The real story has been us. The focus has been us. So this is just, this is a mild little celebration. We're going to have a proper big one at the end of it come to Abu Dhabi about actually scoring some points, let alone actually finishing most of these races. So yeah, another solid job maintaining that lead ahead of Toros and the Constructors' Championship. So uh, like I said, we can be very happy about how we came out, uh, came away from that Grand Prix. Good day today. Tell us about it from your perspective. You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? 
Well, Claire, it's been about the uh, sixth time you've asked me this question about cutting through the field, and uh, once again, yeah, all I can say is, yeah, it's, it was the nimbleness of the car, really. It, it wasn't anything to do with the DNF said of us. We all underestimated you, didn't we? Well, I don't think you underestimate us as a team necessarily, Claire. I think it was more about the fact that you underestimated just how jammy our races could be in terms of how much luck we've had. Great. Well, that's everything. I think now that's probably like maybe the sixth or no, not even sixth or seventh. I'll probably like the fifteenth time we've got very lucky with DNFs ahead of us. But no amount of jamminess, unfortunately, can get us our contract objective, which was fifteenth or above in qualifying. So we unfortunately don't get six hundred extra R and D points. There could have been one extra upgrade, but all in all, I mean, championship wise, race wise, it was still a good job for us. So I mean, I, ca I can't complain. You have to do a better job completing the goals the team set out for you. Their ability to develop will suffer if you miss them. And It'll count against you at the contract reviews. Oh, but apparently Emma can. Apparently Emma was very disappointed in that race. Points paying position finished there. Let's just flash back a little bit because she was ecstatic about the most horrendous result earlier. Great work. That's exactly the kind of result I'm looking for. Keep it up. Great work. That's exactly the kind of result I'm looking for. Keep it up. Great work. That's exactly the kind of result I'm looking for. Keep it up. So once again, to confirm, I have no idea what on earth Claire, Jeff, or Emma are smoking. Like, like I said, I'm convinced they're meeting up in the paddock somewhere because their their opinions on things have just been so up and down. Um, I, yeah, I no words, no words. But uh, we move on. Not surprised though, to be fair, uh, with this team. But we're gonna move on to some upgrades. We can purchase a front downforce upgrade, which is gonna be needed because lately we have been lacking that department. You know. Until we got this drag update, our car was very slow. There was a reason why we had so many strings of bad qualifying. It wasn't really just that I was bottling it in Saturday. I mean, that was a little bit of the reason. I can't deny. You're not wrong. But it's all to be in the fact that our car hasn't had too many downforce upgrades. Because we've had to... Unfortunately, the way the, the R&D tree has been, it's been a little bit stupid. I've had, to do, I've had to do so many drag updates just to get to the downforce upgrade. So it's been a bit of a grind, a bit of a graft. But we've got there in the end. And finally, now we can try and... Add some more downforce to this car. It's a much needed downforce to this car. But like I said, guys, overall, this race was quite a positive one. And next time, Mexico, I think with a long main straight, that is going to be a pretty good Grand Prix for us, I think, I reckon. So if you guys did enjoy this one, though, be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're on your own here, do subscribe for weekly full-on content. I've been Arava. Hope you have a day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.